Good evening and thanks for joining us on News at 6 here on Super Screen Television. I am Precious Amayu. And on the first report here, the Federal Road Safety Corps, FRSC, has deployed 35,000 personnel across the country in preparation for the Christmas and New Year celebrations. The Corps Public Education Officer, Bisi Kazim, who made this known in a statement in Abuja, said those deployed were both regular and special mashas. According to him, the Air Force is part of activities to commence its Operation Zero Tolerance for Road Traffic Crashes, which began Wednesday 19 and would last till January 15, 2019. Kazim further said that the core objectives during the festive period included ensuring free flow of traffic, reduction of crashes to the barest minimum, and quick responses to distress. And our People's Democratic Party, PDP stalwart Olabode George, has decried the low-key reception given to the party's presidential candidate Atiku Abubakar in Lagos State. Olabode George expressed this view today in an interview with journalists in Lagos. I believe Lagos is so strategic in terms of number. It is the economic nerve center for the whole of West Africa. Our presidential candidate is coming into Lagos for whatever, private or public. Huh? We would have had the float. We will have all the drummers, all the characters, and the uh, all kinds of masquerades would have been on the. Like, Lagosians would be thinking, ah, what is happening today? That's the way I would have uh, advised them. And they say, oh, it, it, it was just quickly done, quickly done. Now, well, what was the impact? Atiku is not a man to be taken on in the night. <laughs> you know, he is a man he, 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 who, his name alone, should send some vibes right across the length and breadth, politically. So when they said, I said, I told you now my own sleeping hours. How could I wake up in my head to? Uh, some, some welcome hotel. Speaking on his party's gubernatorial candidate in Lagos State, Jimmy Agbaje, the PDP chieftain urged him to consider all by not undermining the capacity of anybody. A lot of places where uh, he has been going, everybody is saying, ah, where is Chibode George? What is your relationship with Chibode George? <coughs> I'm still alive for and I'm still supporting him. But I, a tree, cannot make a forest. There are other elders in this system. You go and do the same thing and bring them together. That is what he is doing now. That's why, it, 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 you know, it looks like a skeletal thing, that they are yet to flesh up the campaign. Uh, we can't be luckier than this particular time because the emperor has shown his true color. Everybody is important. Those who are conceptualizing now and planning, no stone must be left unturned. Be prepared because we should be working hard to, to succeed, not to fail. We are doing all the dotting all the I's and crossing the T's and all those before they will roll out. I believe this Yulita period, this holiday time, will be the time to get back inside and readjust. And still on politics, the Old Progressive Congress, APC, in Imo State has declared that Senator Hope Uzodima does not belong to the party. APC State Chairman Daniel Uwanfo, who disclosed this to journalists, said the party is also rejecting Uzodima's candidacy. Waffle said Imo APC has also called on security agencies to investigate bribery allegations involving its national chairman, Adam Sushomole, and Senator Uzodima. The state chairman further berated Ushomole for allegedly ignoring a valid court order restraining him for tampering with the state structure of the party. And still on party politics, Ogun State Governor Ibukule Amosu has warned the National Working Committee, NWC, of the All Progressives Congress, APC, against a dissolution of the executive body of the party in the state. 
Amosu, who made this assertion while addressing members of the APC at the party secretariat in Abiyakuta, declared that nothing would happen to the state's executive body. The governor insisted that the state executive members would spend four years in office despite the purported inauguration of a caretaker committee by the NWC. You'll recall that APC NWC had earlier announced the setting up of a caretaker committee headed by Ye Yemi Sanusi to superintend the party in the state. And now Nigerians have been urged to contribute their quota in national development by, to national development by embarking on social welfare activities. This appeal was made by a non-governmental organization, Lions Club International, in Lagos. As Nigerians clamor for a better nation, infrastructure, human capital, economic growth, and good governance, a non-governmental organization, Lions Club International, urged Nigerians and other pressure groups not to depend solely on the government, but to work and support the government's effort. You want to build a nation, you must build yourself. We are the nation. And that's what I keep telling people. You want a good president, you want a good house of assembly, you want a good national assembly. It starts from your home. Impact yourself. Huh? It is not about going to school alone. It's not about being uh, a graduate, a master's degree, or a, a professor. No. Impacting means touching lives. Our own support to government, that's our own area of uh, nation building. We know too well that the government alone cannot do all things. The government alone cannot reach the gra uh, grassroots. So we also contribute our own fair share to the upliftment of our various communities. On its part, every Nigerian is involved in national development as keeping the youths engaged as paramount to fighting crime and contributing to national peace. Assisting the less privileged, assisting the people that cannot feed, feeding them, providing shelter for them, we remove crime. Because if you can provide food, provide shelter, send some of their children to school, by so doing, we must have solved one or, one or two problems in our nation. And that's why we are taking our need to do all, all these uh, humanitarian services, to assist the government. The government cannot do everything alone. Any uh, nation that does not have a very good education is just wasting the lives of its uh, uh, youth. And, and future. Provide students with uh, facilities that governments are either unable to provide or they are not enough. Complement the government in uh, carrying out f um, things that will enhance dignity of human beings. Amidst cultural diversity and political differences, it is only right that Nigerians work together to move the country forward. Anthony Osaibovu, Super Screen News. And on safety and security, the Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps, NSCDC, is set to clamp down on corporate organizations who employ the services of private guards who are unregistered. NSCDC Lagos State Commandant Tajuddin Balugu disclosed this during the launch of a joint task force charged with the responsibility of enforcing the law. We have a new recommendation. And out of this new recommendation is the fact that there will be a joint task force between the Nigerian security, consisting of Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps and members of the Association of Licensing Private Security Practitioners in Nigeria, basically for the purpose of completely eradicating illegal private operators in the country. You will quite realize that Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps is the only agency allowed to supervise, monitor, train, recommend for approval, license wide, and the only agent that can seal up private guard company. So we have been doing wonderfully well by reducing illegal operators. Now we are extending that scope by working with members of the Association of Lancet Private Security Partners, who can also feed us back and we work together to seal any illegal company operating without following the due process and procedure. The Joint Tax Force, which is in partnership with the Certified Private Security Body in Nigeria, is a welcome development for the licensed practitioners in the country. 
We are indeed very glad that this is happening at this time. Because the activities of illegal operators has actually been a, a pain in our neck. Mm -hmm. Because they have been undercutting, uh, undercutting our practice. And they have been taking jobs at, at amounts that is uh, very ridiculous. We are going to work hand in hand with Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps to make sure that um, um, this, uh, that business becomes a business that is, um, that is, is done in a accordance with the laws. Quackery has been a problem, not only in the security, security sector, quackery in the medical field, quackery even legal profession. So I think this tax force will go a long way in checkmating this issue of quackery. Those who are not qualified to carry out the profession or they carry out the security industry who don't even have anything about, have no idea about security profession, just go and start carrying out illegal things. So I think it will go along with trying to sensitize the industry and usually those who are licensed and qualified professionals are actually into, into the business. Our interest is for all organizations to be licensed because um, some of these unlicensed companies even get big, bigger jobs than those of us that are licensed. So the essence of this exercise is to ensure that um, they are chased away from the business so that the business can come to those who have been putting uh, you know, appropriate structures that the law demands to be able to operate in Nigeria. A federal capital territory high court sitting in Abuja has ordered the Nigerian police force to release Adeji Adeyonju from custody with immediate effect to avert further infringement on his rights. Recalling the recent rearrest of Adeji Adeyonju by the police, citing allegations of culpable homicide in 2009 in Kano State, the presiding judge, Justice Adizi Senchi, quotes that the accused person, having been cleared of the said charges 15 years ago by a Kano State High Court, stands to remain free pending fresh charges from the prosecutor. Reacting to the judgment, counsel to the accused, Mike Ozeko Messan, described the judgment as victory for democracy. The case was, however, adjourned till 7th January 2019 for further hearing. Meanwhile, a Kano, state, a Kano magistrate's court has ordered the remand of Deji Adeyonju in prison until February 2019. The Nigerian police force on December 13 arrested Adeyonju, accusing him of being complicit in a murder case. Adeyonju was accused of killing a Kano businessman, Al Hassan Ali, on Thursday, January 6, 2005, in Kano. Adeyonju was discharged and acquitted by a Kano State High Court in 2009. 13 years late after the case was being cited by the police who have arrested and released Adeyonju on two different occasions before his recent arrest. In his citing, in sitting on Friday, Fagis said he had determined that he lacked the power to hear the homicide charges brought against Adeyonju, but said the political activist should be remanded in prison until February 6, when a higher court could be available to hear the matter. you recall that the Nigeria Senate had on Tuesday ordered his joint committee on police and judiciary to investigate the ongoing detention of the activist by the police. You're still watching News at 6 here on Super Screen Television. We'll take a quick break now and we'll return with business news. Stay with us. Welcome back and many thanks for staying with us and now on business. Minister of State for Agriculture and Rural Development, Heineken Lokbobiri, has decried abuse of the economic community of West African State ECOWAS Protocol, which allows neighboring states to bring in rice into Nigeria. Lokbobiri, who disclosed this while receiving the new country manager of the International Fund for Agricultural Development in Abuja, said a challenge with the ECOWAS protocol is that neighboring countries now freely dump their rice in Nigeria. 
The minister noted that President Muhammad Buhari is currently engaging the President of Benin Republic on the best ways to curb smuggling. Lubobiri also said Nigeria used to spend $5 million on daily importation of rice, but through new policy programs by his ministry and the intervention of partners, the figure has drastically reduced. And in the telecom sector, Nigerian Com Communications Commission, NCC, says the level of interconnect debts in the country is so high that it can sink the telecommunications industry if left unchecked. NCC Executive Commissioner Stakeholder Management Sunday Dari, who disclosed this in a statement, said it is because of this that the Regulatory Commission has given limited approval to operators to disconnect debt, debt on networks. Dari said approval given by NCC was not for any network to disconnect subscribers, but for some creditor networks to restrict services to debt on networks. Interconnect debt represents the debt incurred by an operator for terminating calls on another network. In the bond market, the Debt Management Office, DMO, says there has been an oversubscription of a Sukuk offer by 32 billion naira. In a document published on his website, DMO had offered 100 billion, Sukuk, 100 billion naira Sukuk for subscription, which was opened from December 6, 2018, and expected to close on December 17, 2018. It noted that the interest payment is half yearly. But the DMO, in a statement issued to reporters on Friday, said the total subscription received from bidders at the auction was 132 billion naira. We take another quick break now and we'll return with news from the international scene and sports. Stay with us. <laughs> 